Dynamic position is uh, allowing the vessel to remain in one spot. Um, the, the ship is influenced by the sea and the current. In an ideal world, if there was no wind and no current and the ship was stopped, it would remain in that spot. But because we have wind and current and waves, that causes the ship to move. With dynamic positioning, we have a mathematical model of the vessel and uh, we have two bow thrusters, two stern thrusters, two propellers and a rudder. We also feed in a position input into the DP. We then tell the DP computer, which has a mathematical model of the ship, that we want the ship to remain at this one spot. And the mathematical model feels the wind and the current being exerted on it, and then it applies control signals to the thrusters, which enable the ship to remain in one spot. The sea state is the main factor. The wind, I mean, you put the head to wind with the ship, you can operate maybe even up to a force nine. But um, the sea conditions are your limiting factor, and that uh, in, a, in a heavy sea, she will get knocked around with a heavy sea. So you, um, potentially, on this ship, you could sit in DP with 26 knots of wind and maybe a force the sea state of five or six. You can as well dynamic position in a force eight, head to wind quite comfortably, but that'll depend on the sea conditions. So you maybe have, um, if it's blowing, blowing force eight, force nine for a short period of time, she'll sit there comfortably. But once the sea starts to build, she won't be able to hold her position. And do warning signs come off when you're reaching that? Yeah, well, what, what, what you can tell when, when the, the ship is uh, working hard in sea conditions, you can hear it to start with, you can hear the thrusters working hard, you're getting the vibration coming through the ship. We've also got these gauges on here that tell us what the thruster levels are. So at the moment they're at green, which is below 60%. Once we start working hard, you get above 60%, the thrusters will go to amber. And then the next sign will be red, which is working 80% of their maximum. And she's using a lot, a lot of power to hold station. And that's when we want to be thinking about uh, turning everything off and uh, battening down the hatches. We can also tell by looking at these gauges how much power the ship is using. But you can, you can feel the ship, you can hear it. When the bow thrusters are working really hard, the whole ship is, you can hear it rumbling. I think I noticed that last night, did I? Yeah, you would have done, yes. Last night uh, we were doing uh, 360 degrees t uh -huh. turns by remaining stationary, but at times uh, we were having to use uh, a lot of power just to maintain the position. So I know that this feature of the ship is very important for the deployment of the ROV. Uh, yes, it is, yeah. Um, for a deployment on ROV, the, the ROV likes to operate from a, a, a stable platform, one that's not uh, moving around too much. In the old days, we used to do a lot of ROV work without DP, um, but it, having the DP makes it a lot easier and it takes a lot of the workload off the, the operator on the bridge. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot easier and we can, with the dynamic position, we can do more finite control and we'll be able to do manumatic, but we can, you can do ROV operations in manual mode. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. We want to take the ship out of DP and put her into steaming mode, manual mode. Um, so first thing what we'll do is um, we have to retract the bow azimuth thruster. So what I'll do, I will disable that from the, the system. And over here we control all the, our thrusters from this panel. 
So what we do, we stop the drive motor. That sends a signal down to the azimuth and I'll tell it to go to its parked position. Once it's in its parked position, I will then press the button, thrust it in, and we should see it retract on that TV screen over there. Okay. So now that it's in its parked position, press the thruster in button, the green light will start flashing. And then we can see in the screen there, I don't know if you can see it with your camera, wheel, but you can see the, the bow azimuth thruster coming in. Oh, well, yes, okay. Fantastic. Now it's almost in the raised position, we've just got to watch this. There's a lot, an arm on the left hand side that comes down. Right. So we're just watching that to come down now. And that's it stopped now, and then the arm should come down. He says, there it goes, there's the locking arm coming in. And that's uh, the azimuth retracted and stored. So now we want to come out of DP and get underway. So all I've got to do here is basically press one button. Okay, so I press this one button here. And now, just about, it's still it's thinking about it. Okay, so that's everything now transferred to this control here. So I can control the ship with this joystick. So, but we're going to revert to manual and go into autopilot mode. So what I've got to do now is deselect all the thrusters and the engines from the DP computer. Again, just press one button here, apply, and now the ship, there's no control of the ship at all. Nothing has got control, all the thrusters are disabled. The DP hasn't got control of any thrusters or anything. These tags are very important because they tell us that we've got our bioazimuth down and we've got our USBL poles out. Um, it's just another warning. Like I said, if we leave the poles out and we go underway, we can bend them. So it causes a problem. So now we're out, we've got no control of the ship. We want to go into manual mode. Flick the switch to manual. The, the, the DP computer has no control of the ship. We are now just a conventional ship. Okay. So now I've got the control of the steering from here and the engines are controlled from these two sticks here. So we want to come around to a course of roughly uh, 032. So we'll go around to starboard. So I'll just give it a kick ahead on the engines. I can see that the, the engines are responding in the dials there. I can also see the RPMs coming up on the screen there. So I now in hand steering and I've got hand control of the engines. Obviously, before you get underway, you want to look out the window, make sure that there's nothing close by, because it has happened before ships have just taken off of it, looking out the window, and the next thing they've, they've had a, a crunch. So, over here we've got the thruster panel. We're in manual control again, so I can control all the thrusters, but I don't need them at the moment. So I'm just going to switch them all off. Again, similar to the the azimuth, we just stop the drive motor, which is basically gives the power of the turning side of it for the propellers to get them going. And then we, we stop the servos. The servo controls the sort of speed of it. So if you send a signal down, it uses the servo. So we'll stop that. So that's us now in uh, just a normal ship mode now. Right, we're, we're, I think uh, yesterday morning we, we stopped off, um, we were hove to overnight waiting for the weather to improve in about 1500 metres of water to do an ROV deployment. Um, as you're probably aware we're now in 4000 metres of water, we've just carried out a USBL calibration um, and that went very well. We've now finished that side of things and we're now proceeding back up to 1500 metres of water to do an ROV launch with the possibility of a glider launch maybe tonight or tomorrow morning. So we'll just have to wait and see. Just depends how quickly we can get up the road. So just coming round still. Get this get the speed on. 
So what's the normal um, cruising speed, John? For this vessel, we, um, we, 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 we cruise around with uh, two main engines. We've got four diesel electric. The ship's got a diesel electric configuration, so she has, her main propulsion is two electrical motors, and they're power supplied by four diesel generators. In a normal sea passage mode, we operate with two diesel generators, and that'll give us a service speed of around about 11 knots on a good day. Wow. Yeah. So the top speed is around? Top speed, if we put four generators on and went to 80, 85%, we could probably get about 16 knots out of her. So she's, she's got a lot of power, this ship. A lot of power. Yeah. So, as you can see in the radar, we're slowly coming around now. We're on about a heading of 290. Um, we've got another 100 degrees before we get onto the course that we went to. And uh, the speed's picking up all the time. So, I'll just steady her up now. But we can't steer the ship all the time because. Um, we haven't got the manpower to do that anymore. So what we do is we've got, we've got this little autopilot here. So to engage the autopilot, there's this, this little button here we press. And now all the steering control has been passed to this little box here. Now we just need to confirm that everything is correct on here. So it's telling me that this console is now in control of the ship. And this will steer the ship for me. To change the course, just press this button here. Turn the dial to the required heading that I want. So let's do a bit of a handbrake turn. Oh, really? Yeah, we'll try. Okay, so now it's going to put starboard helm on and it's going to turn the ship at 60 degrees a minute. So it should do that. I'm going to feel unwell now, aren't I? Nah, you'll be fine. <laughs> See, once we, uh, we, 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 the sea up the stern, following seeing that, she's a very comfortable ship. Very comfortable. So you, you, you won't have any problems. How, can you leave, how long can you leave on autopilot on this? I can go, okay. I could sail from Punta Arenas in Chile in autopilot and turn it off again when we get to Avon my 31 days later. Really? Yes. That's amazing. And w w with the autopilot, you can, you can actually get it configured in with our electronic chart system. So it, what it'll do then, it'll follow the track that's on the, that we've inputted in and it'll steer that track for you, so we won't have to do, potentially there would be no human interface at all with the steering of the ship. Amazing. Potentially, we, we have to watch it. So we're almost on our course now, so we're just checking that the autopilot is working correctly, so far it uh, appears to be. Like anything with involving computers and electronics and technology, you do have to keep an eye on it. It does make our life a lot easier, but we do have to to keep tabs on it like so no. now we're almost on course I'll just keep bringing the speed up okay. probably come up to maybe 110 115 rpms which is about 65 percent load right. on the two generators once we get past 65 into 70 we're getting into the realms of bringing on the third engine which um, we try and avoid it doesn't cause us a problem we can just phone down the engine room ask them to turn the engine off it just means we have to pull the revs back a little bit or what we do we can pull the engines back quite significantly wait 10-15 minutes and the third engine will stop but that's 10-15 minutes of time that you lost so the key is not to let it come on so we just have to sit here watch the revs and watch what loads coming on uh, uh, well that, that's the uh, ship now in manual mode now underway to the next job site and all we'll do now is we'll just keep a, a good lookout to ensure we don't bump into any other ships or, or anything else and we'll just do normal navigation okay yeah.